So the trouble that the rough-handed man gets into results in this guy chasing him out to his car, and that's where Sam starts barking and, and howling and being real nasty to the guy that's trying to get in the truck. And so Sam barks at him, scares the guy away, and the rough-handed man's problem, does anybody remember what his problem is? Yeah, it's 23. It's money. Uh, specifically, it sounds like he was gambling, and we know that because if we look at that guy's back pocket, he's got cards coming out of it. There was money involved. The guy wants his money, and the rough-handed man's like, I'll get you your money, um, and they peel out, they burn rubber, they get out of there. And the hook, and the rough-handed man, I keep wanting to say the hook-handed man, that's a different story. That's the uh, series of unfortunate events. Um, so the rough-handed man has an idea, and he tells Sam, please forgive me, but I got a way we can get our money back. And that's where the story starts, which if you remember where the story starts, what was happening at the beginning of the book? Fighting. There was a dog fight going on, which we decided yesterday that chances are it sounds like Sam is gonna be put into a dog fighting ring for money. Uh, what are the chances that a weeder dog is gonna do well in a dog fighting ring? A weeder dog that's our, he's already got been injured, broken ribs, he's missing a leg, he's been cut up from the bar, the razor wire. Uh, does he stand much of a chance? No, Probably not. And if you remember the beginning of the story, does he fight? No, no he just kind of lays down, doesn't he? I think he's just like laying there and the, hook, and the rough handed man's telling him to get up. Chapter 23. This chapter is called Leave. As the rough handed man carried Sam down into the dark depths of the building at the edge of the city, the sights and smells of human beings and money and cruelty couldn't overwhelm an even larger sense that the three legged dog was feeling fear. His own, and surprisingly, the man's, it radiated up from his huge hands, cradling Sam's bottom and chest as they moved toward the dog-fighting pit below the brilliant light. But there was something else Sam smelled besides the man's sweat and fear. Shame. Sam sensed and saw it on the man's face as he gently lowered Sam into the tiny arena. Now surrounded by yelling faces and waving money, shame. The man's eyes avoided Sam as he turned to make some sort of arrangement with all the money-waving men. Sam realized now that it was that, the money, that this was all about. And the trembling, spitting, screaming beast that arched to get at Sam across the pit was the obstacle for the man getting it. Sam was meant to fight and win and survive. It's not likely. Which is why Sam lay down against the wall and closed his eyes, allowing for the first time in many years the memories of a long past life to flood his mind before, coming violence, before the coming violence descended upon his tiny body. He was back in the grass of Vermont, running, a girl's voice calling his name. But then another familiar voice broke through. Buddy! Buddy! Sam opened his eyes and looked up at the crowd of faces, he saw the rough-handed man looking down at him, but he saw something just below him, a ragged poster next to the others lining the filthy walls of the pit. And if I remember right, I'm trying to think if this has it. Oh, it does. Go back to page six, and you'll see a good picture of Sam lying there with a ragged poster right above him. That didn't mean much to us earlier. But if you look carefully at that picture and take a look at the picture that's on there, it says the Westminster Dog Show. And who is the star of the Westminster Dog Show? Cassius. That's a picture of Cassius. <sighs> he saw something just below him, a ragged poster next to the others lining the filthy walls of the pit. It was for the Westminster Dog Show in New York City. It was the large picture of a dog at the center of it that made Sam sit up and squint into the glare of the overhead lights. It was a huge poodle looking gorgeous and regal and very, very familiar. Cassius. A word that had long been blocked out along with the rest of his memories. A word that suddenly fell on his mind like a butcher's cleaver. Cassius, Sam said loudly. 
Cassius? The crowd heard a bark from the absurd tiny dog lying in the pit waiting for death. Silence. Two hundred voices suddenly went still. Their waving hands grasping the money stopped. The rough-handed man stared, as did the others, waiting. Even the great snarling pit bull opposite Sam froze. Cassius. The destroyer of worlds. Sam's world. Cassius was alive? If only it were he that stood five feet away from five feet away at this moment, thought Sam, rather than the mindless broken pit bull that was, that would be something to live for and to die for. To kill for Cassius is still out there. That single thought, the seed of an unfinished idea, was enough to hook the frayed remnant that had become Sam's life and keep him from sinking. The stunned crowd watched in disbelief as Sam got to his feet. His eyes, now wide and focused, scanned the small pit and wood that surrounded it and the killing machine opposite of him. I'm looking at that picture. And the killing machine opposite his nose. I gotta get out of this place, he thought, his mind racing, roaring, cooking at full boil. But first he had to deal with this huge saliva dripping problem in front of him. He dug deep for his instincts and skills from a distant time in his life. Time to change the rules. Let him go, Sam barked to the man holding back the pit bull. Now! Remember, does Sam talk? No, he's barking. So all these words, that's what he would be saying. It's like translated, but you should be hearing like barking. It's just a wiener dog going really crazy and barking a lot. But this is what he would really be saying if you translated it to dog into English. The pit bull opposite was released, but before the great dog could lunge, Sam was rushing him. Mason, make sure you're following along, please. We're on the bottom of 136. Sam was rushing him. The massive jaws snapped at Sam's tiny head, but found only air. For Sam had dropped low and slid right between his wide set legs as if on ice, emerging below the dog's tail. Spinning, Sam leaped atop the beast's back and careened off his head like a squirrel bouncing off, across. bouncing across a rock in a stream. But as Sam passed the smooth head, his stainless steel leggle whacked the surprised beast on the skull, stunning him, making him wobble on his spread feet. Sam raced around the perimeter at, bl at blinding speed, the bigger dog spinning dizzily in the opposite direction, vainly trying to intercept the smaller, faster one, all of which made Sam look like a tiny ball spinning around the giant roulette wheel. The crowd screamed this they had never seen before. The rough-handed man simply sat, mouth slightly open, eyes wide in shock. The pit bull, powerful but slower than the tiny target, and Sam... Stayed in front of his flashing teeth. Over and over, Sam would leap high onto the wall and fall atop the big dog's head with a well-aimed whack of the steel ladle. But this wouldn't be enough. It only drove the pit bull into further rage. The snot blowing from his flared black nostrils like the dragon's breath. It set itself up for one final run straight at Sam. It backed up against the wall. The big dog kept his head low, knowing Sam's favorite trick. The muscled legs propelled the fighting machine forward with shocking power, and his head was nearly upon Sam when the dachshund leaped straight, leapt, leaped straight up, four feet like a sprung mattress spring. He wrapped his front legs around the surprised fist of the rough-handed man leaning over the railing and hung on. The pit bull never saw Sam do this, and to this day, he remembers none of it, for when he hit the wall with the top of his pointed head, he was knocked clean into uh, to blissful unconsciousness, where he immediately commenced a dream of being stuck inside a locked closet filled with expensive shoes and beef liver and then eating his way out. The default, fa the default fantasy for all pit bulls. There's a good picture of him crashing into the wall with all his might. I agree. The crowd sat stunned, silent. They turned their eyes up to Sam, still dangling on the rough-handed man's arm, who lifted the victorious dachshund and placed him on the wall before him. Slowly and silently, the man began handing fistfuls of cash to the man, laying them in little piles next to his dog, their bets. It was a lot of money. 
Sam looked up at the only small window above the crowd's head, the full moon shining brilliantly beyond the distant horizon. He looked back over the man's eyes and looked at him squarely. Even if this human being would have understood the dog, no words were needed. It was time for Sam to leave. D, please don't do that. The rough-handed man looked back into the eyes of the dog that he had nursed back from the edge of death many months ago and smiled. Then with a wink, he stared squarely at Sam and began singing under his breath, Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Instantly, Sam hopped atop the man's head, and then he leaped to another two feet behind him. That man threw his hands up to try to catch the bounding dog, but Sam was long gone to the next noggin, and then the next, and then the next, moving ever closer to the window behind them as all the men went wild again and again and roared, pushing closer and reaching to stop the, leap, the head-leaping runaway. Dogs just don't escape. They were all thinking, not here, and especially not one that just took all their money, Food and drink cups and bottles were hurtled towards Sam, but the dog simply ducked and dodged the missiles. Two men spotted his destination and moved to block the tiny window. Now where? Grimy hands reached up for him, tearing the folds out of the skin, but finding no purchase with the smooth coat of fur, Sam moved in jerky, frantic changes of direction as he looked for any escape, any exit, any possible path to freedom. But the enraged crowd only closed in tighter. The lights went out and the room fell into darkness. Suddenly... A different voice, a dog's voice, cut through the roar as if someone had turned the crowd's volume control down. Hey, lad. Hey, over here, lad. Hey. Hey, what? Who, who's that? He heard it again. Over here, doggy, doggy. Sam couldn't see the collar, but he leaped across more heads towards the voice, trusting its urgency. There was no other option. The tunnel. Go for the bloody tunnel, said the stranger with a metallic echo. Follow me, melodious voice. Sam spied a small opening at the base of a filthy wall at the back of the room. A heating duct from where the voice emerged, Sam went for it. He shot into the dark hole, but a large red-faced man with a stinking, fuming cigar, clenched and angry teeth, grabbed the weakest link in any dog chase. Sam's tail. Sam came to a sudden stop in the duct. And then he was dragged backward toward the man's huge red bald head, which was now wholly inserted into the aluminum tunnel. Sam had little choice but to push the nuclear button in a dog's world of survival. He peed. This, among other more useful results, extinguished the cigar. Could you imagine the guy puts his head in there, grabs Sam, and then Sam pss pees all over him. Ew.